Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about data transforms. So what is a data transform? Well, in Pega, a data transform, as its name suggests, is a rule that transforms the data in your case. This way, some data can be transformed to meet the business requirements, or also some data can be set for some fields in your cases. One good example of this is when we are creating cases. So let me create a case. In Dev Studio, you can create a case clicking the Create menu, going to New, and selecting the case that you want to create. So for example, for a data transform that is useful for us right now that we are just testing and developing this case type is to already have all of the information that we need in each step. So instead of me having to set the information each time that I open a new case, what I want to do is to have the information already filled in my cases so I can go through the case type quickly. In Pega, when we create a new case type, some data transforms are created automatically. So let's go to the App Explorer. Here in my reservation class, I'm going to go to data model, data transform. And here we have two data transforms that are created automatically. Each time, that you run a reservation case type, these two data transforms get called. I'm going to open the PY default data transform. And here we can see that we already have some information. So a data transform is composed of steps. A step can have an action, a target, a relation, and a source. In this case, the action is to run another data transform, which is called PYSetFieldDefaults. So this actually is this data transform that we have over here. This is not important right now. What I want to do is to add a new step and I'm going to set some information for my case type when I create it. So something important is that when you see these types of inputs where we have this blue triangle, this means that this type of input can find certain information that it could use. The main way that you want to use this field is clicking the down arrow and you will see some properties that we can use. In this case, I'm going to use the select hotel property. As you can see, when we are working with properties, it will always have this dot character at the beginning. So I'm going to set this hotel equal to something. So let's see what hotels we have in database. Let's go to data types. Let's click on the database icon for till. I have these five records. I'm going to choose any one of these. For example, this one. I'm going to copy the name. And I'm going to use it for this select till. When you are working with strings, you have to put them in between quotes. And now I'm going to save this and test if this works. So because I locked this rule set, I have to create it in a newer rule set. So I'm going to click Save As. I'm going to leave the label and the identifier as it is. 
the class as it is, but I'm going to choose an available rule set, which is this one. Okay, so let's create a new case. And it works. We have information that we wanted. Uh, now I'm going to do the same for the check-in and check-out dates. So here in source for a date, right now I don't know how to enter a date right here. Something that we can do is select this gear icon to build an expression. So here we can write some expressions, for example, the date. So we can browse for some functions that we can use. So let's see if I write date and click search. We can see that we have many different functions for the date. So I'm going to try to search for a function that is called today. When we hover over functions, we can see some information about the function. In this case, here we can see that this is returning the current date. So I'm going to use this function. I'm going to close the parentheses and I'm going to click on submit. So I'm going to save this now and see if this works. And yeah, it, it seems to work. Now let's do the same for the checkout date. So let's do the same. We can search for the function again, or we can write it if we know the function. Something that we can do here is to click on test to see what kind of result is the one that is returning. So in this case, we can see that it is returning an integer. So if I add one to this function, let's see what happens. So we can see that it added one to this result. So if I add five, then I think that's five days from today. So let's see if this works. Remember to save the rule each time that you update it. Yeah, it works. This is today and this is five days from today. So the state duration is five. So this works fine for now, but obviously we don't want to have this information each time that any user or any client is running the case type. We only want this when we are developing this case type. So for this, I think it's a good idea to have all of these properties that are we automatically setting in a different data transform so that we can remove it when we are going to no longer be working in testing. So I'm going to add a new step and I'm going to, instead of setting all of this automatically, I'm going to apply a data transform that is going to set these properties. Here we can find some data transform. In this case, we only have two. If we want to create a new one, we can enter the name of the data transform that we want to create. So in this case, I think a good name could be my defaults for development. So 
So then we are going to click in this target icon. If it finds Tetra Transform, it will open it. And if not, it will create it. So here we are creating this data transform. The context is fine. The rule set is fine. I'm going to create and open it. And now I'm going to move all of this over here. Instead of clicking this plus icon, you can also have your cursor here and just press the enter key. Here in the history tab, we can set the description and the usage for this rule. So I'm going to save it. And let's go back to our PY default and make sure that we are using the correct data transform. Now I can remove these steps. I'm going to right click and click on delete. Now we have this data transform by default that calls my defaults for development data transform, which sets all of the values that we need for fast case traversing. So let's save this and let's see if this is working. It works. I'm going to click on continue. Now in this step, I'm also going to work with data transform, but before that, I'm going to change it so that we can select multiple rooms, not only one. For example, maybe a client wants to reserve a single room and a double. So he wants to have two rooms for his reservation. So we're going to do that in the next video. See ya.